so happy to be here with Marcus Dilly. So Marcus um, <clears throat> is right now, you have everyone's attention because whether what? someone's heard of chat GPT or they've tried it or like yes. me they're completely addicted. And as soon as they get up in the morning, they have to ask it every single question that's on its mind. Yes. Right. Yes. We're okay. all in different okay. places. On with this. Okay. So I'm, uh oh, got to mute somebody. Okay. There we go. We're all in different places with this. So let me introduce you because what I heard was, is that you need no introduction. Like you're well known in, um, EXP family tree. And so, um, you know, I can keep it short and sweet, right? But I tell you what, there's some really incredible things here. I want to make sure that everybody know that Marcus Dilly is out of Charlotte, right? You're out of Charlotte. Yes, yes. Area. And you've been named the top 125 most influential leaders of 2022 by Success Magazine and is in the top of 1% of influencers and a team and team builder for your firm. But most importantly, you've gotten the Icon Agent Award for four years in a row based on hitting your production milestones. I'm sure that's been life-changing for you for four years, and especially what's happened with the stock over the last four years. I can't even, God has been so good to us and our family Aww. in this business. We, we are so blessed and we have, we work with the greatest people, you know, I mean, this is all about a team effort, right? We call ourselves yeah. a tribe and we truly feel that way. And it's just amazing to see, I've never worked in any organization where collaboration was, mm -hmm. you know, encouraged over competition. It's really collaboration over competition. And you want to see people do better than you, yeah. <laughs> you know, in many ways. You encourage them, you give them the tools, you give them the support, and you cheer them on. And I've just never seen anything like it. And it's just a testament to the company, testament to the, you know, titans of industry that work for and with this company and it's just an amazing place to be so i'm glad to be here well, i am so excited to have you here and i will tell you i love this i do want to point this out that you're a musician and a health and wellness advocate and you serve as one of the worship arts leaders for steel creek church of charlotte so shout out to steel creek church and love spending time with your wife ashley you're amazing three amazing children liberty honor and justice and your rescue dog glory. And I have to tell you, I love that part because it's not just about real estate, right? It's not just about building a business. It's more than that. And that's a testament to that. So that's awesome. So Amen. today, Marcus, I'm going to hand it over to you. We can move forward any way you want. I thought I would just hand it over to you and kind of give us a preview. First of all, thank you so much for being here with us today. All of you, if you missed what Carrie said, Marcus is, um, going to be here once a month volunteering his time to help all of us get better. And uh, for that, I'm just going to turn it over to Marcus so he can just knock us out with some of this amazing digital um, information that we can use for leverage in our business. So I am super stoked. Thank you so much, Becky. And I got to tell you, I'm just geeking out on this stuff. Like I feel like I have, I'm a kid at Christmas. Uh, the uh, what's come out, what is coming out. There's so much stuff coming down the pike and uh, I'm just, I'm proud to be able to present this. I'll tell you what, <laughs> I kind of made a rookie mistake last time I did this, right? I tried to put like 10 pounds of sugar in a five pound bag. <laughs> and like the, the last presentation I did, it's, it was just too much, it's too much information, it's too fast. And I got comments on that quite a bit. So what I'm going to do as I'm doing this monthly with your team, I'm going to break it down and just do it a little simpler, do it a little, hopefully, hopefully it's a little easier to digest. You know, cool. we're going to go a little slower and we're going to take it one at a time. So there's still going to be a lot of information, still going to be exciting, still going to be fun, but we're not going to try to, you know, make people feel like they're drinking through a fire hose all the time. And hopefully that'll help things to settle a little bit more and help people to be able to implement it a little bit better. I think so. That sounds like a great plan, right? Because if we could just take one of these things and do it at a level 10 X, it would make a huge difference in our business. So 1000%, 1000%. Sometimes it's just that one thing that you hear. It's that one thing that you see. It's that one person that, you know, that changes everything for you. You know, there's so much opportunity here that hopefully um, you guys will get something out of it and be able to use it. So, um, awesome. all right. So here's what I'm going to do. I have got a PowerPoint that I'm going to go ahead and share. So if you can okay. share your screen with me. And you got it. Let me make you it already be good. I think you, you are co-host already. I'm already good. Excellent. All right. So last time we did this, Carrie, you gave me a tip 
about being able to use the internal audio. Um, I'm going to be speaking oh, yeah. over it. I'm going to be speaking over it live. Uh, but there is a very short video um, that has some sound. It doesn't really matter if it's not there, but I just want to make sure I've got it, got it working properly. So. Um, Carrie. Yep. That when you, sh oh, I know what you're talking about. When you share it. Yeah. You just yeah, want to know how to do the audio. audio. He just shares audio. Yep. Yeah. You guys there? Yep. yep. I can hear you. All right, good. Can you see the screen? We can. Super exciting. All right. Share. Give me the share the audio information again. Uh, Carrie, where, just, did, where was that? I think you just click on that bar now, the bar that's like your, your workplace bar. And if you go under options or more, it'll okay. say share audio. Okay. You see, yep. All right. Bear with me here, guys. Let me go back. It's just like a main, like we're, uh, wait, the main zoom bar that wherever it shows up on your screen. Now that you're sharing your screen where it's like the bar that has all the things and it says more. Okay. Oh, got it. All right. Uh, let's see. Share sound. All right, cool. All right. Let's go back. We'll do it again. All right. I think we're ready. Okay. You like that picture? Is that cool? Can you guys see that? Hello? What? Yes. Oh yeah, there it is. Sorry, I was on mute. I see uh, the person in in that. I it took me isn't a second. That like, isn't that a robot. cool picture? <laughs> yes. Oh, it's a person. Yeah. yeah a person in there. Yeah. Ooh. So we are going to wow. talk today about digital leveraging. And today we're going to talk about generative AI. That's what we're going to focus on. Nice. Now, generative AI, right? AI is artificial intelligence. Generative sounds like generate, right? That's where that comes from. So generative AI, what is it? It is a type of artificial intelligence technology that can produce various types of content, including text, imagery, audio, and synthetic data. Okay. So here's a couple examples. Most of what you guys are seeing and using right now is generative AI. That's kind of an umbrella statement for what you can call it. So interestingly enough, the open AI platform that this comes from is, is chat GPT, which is what a lot of people are hearing, but chat GPT, Dolly 2, Bing AI, Jasper and mid journey are a few that you're going to be hearing a lot more about if you haven't already. Um, and Jasper and chat B GPT are kind of similar. In fact, Jasper came out much earlier than chat GPT, even though it was available to a select group of sort of test beta subjects. And Jasper used that same open AI platform to build something that's now, I think, worth $2.5 billion. That's much more marketing based. So the language model of chat GPT was used through Jasper to build like a marketing language processing model for those who do more sales and marketing. That was sort of the angle that they took and why that took off so well, but it's really all based on the same language model, open AI chat GPT. Same thing for being AI, which I just looked at a, a, this a minute ago myself actually is, is uh, this is a Microsoft plugin for a search function that is still built from chat GPT, still built from that same framework. Now, Dolly 2 and Midjourney, they are also generative AI systems, but they are basically text to image generators, right? So you can just text your wildest, craziest ideas and it will generate a picture uh, it's a real life picture, or it can look as if it's a painting or a drawing, some sort of artistic, uh, you know, output. Um, so these are just some kind of ideas of what of what you're seeing, what it is, and how it's being implicated in business and uh, for sales and marketing, etc. So what you want to know is, how is this important to me? What does this mean for me? Right? So <laughs> this is cool. I asked ChatGPT to describe itself 
two realtors in a presentation about what it does, literally type this in, and this is what it said. Thank you for inviting me to speak to you today. My name is Chat GPT, and I'm an AI language model developed by OpenAI based on the GPT-4 architecture. I'm here to discuss how I can support your business and improve your client experience. As an AI language model, my primary function is to understand and generate human-like text based on the input I receive. I've been trained on a vast data set of text from various sources, which enables me to carry out tasks related to natural language processing, including answering questions, offering recommendations, and providing valuable insights. In the context of real estate, I can be a valuable asset to your business by A, enhancing customer service. I can provide quick and accurate responses to client inquiries through chat platforms, email, or other communication methods, significantly reducing response times and increasing client satisfaction. B, streamline internal processes. I can assist with tasks such as document generation, contract reviews, and data analysis, helping you save time and focus on more strategic activities. C, market analysis and insights. Boom. With my ability to, to process large amounts of data, I can provide market trends, property insights, and neighborhood statistics to support your decision-making process. D, lead generation and marketing. This is you know, the foundation of our business. I can help identify potential leads, the money, craft personalized messages, and assist with social media management to maximize your outreach efforts. And finally, E, continuous learning and adaptation. As a self-improving AI, I constantly learn from my interactions to enhance my understanding and provide even better assistance in the future. To summarize, I'm a highly versatile AI language model that can help you streamline your operations, enhance customer service, and make more informed decisions in your real estate business. By integrating me into your workflow, you can unlock new opportunities for growth and efficiency. I look forward to working alongside you and supporting your real estate endeavors. Has anybody fallen over? <laughs> I know that was a lot to read, but I really wanted to go through all that because I wanted you guys to hear how this computer is talking to you about how it can help you in your business in case maybe you didn't know exactly what it could do for you or just sort of the gimmick uh the the mind-blowing nature of what i just read from just asking that question um, and this is again the chat gpt4 architecture which is a step up from if you've been hearing about chat gpt3 or 3.5 it's kind of similar to what a lake would be to the ocean as far as the data set. Because ChatGPT has really been around, this open AI language processing model has been around for a really long time and they've been training it in order to, because obviously this all comes from humans, right? This is not a living, I know there's a lot of fears about AI. Uh, I'm go, I've gone all into this, but really it's not gonna do anything without human intervention right? It, it, it's only as good as the humans behind it, the training that the humans give it, right? It's only regurgitating data and information that we have put forth for a period of time. In fact, the data set, I believe, only goes to 2021. But remember that, like anything else in life, guys, what this is, is just a tool. We talked about that in the beginning. Chat GPT is just a tool. So I was a builder back in the day, right? I learned how to swing a hammer. I love the concept of houses, not just because I'm a realtor, but I love the foundational uh, concept of what building a house is like. You know, I love the analogies that it implicates in life and building business relationships, health. I love the, you know, you have to pour a deep foundation. Somebody told me once, if you're looking to build something, a business, let's say, if you equate it to a house, right? If you want to, little, you know, three bedroom ranch style business, then you can pour, you know, low footers. They don't have to be that wide. They don't have to be that deep. It doesn't take that long to build the foundation, to lay it brick by brick, uh, you know, to do the masonry, right? It, it just, there's not as much support that's needed. So you don't have to do quite as much work. But if your business is, would be equated to a hundred story skyscraper, man, you got to dig those footers deep 
and you got to pour those suckers wide. And it takes a really, really long time, almost as long as it would take to build the entire house just to pour the foundation. Mm. Chat GPT is just a tool. And, you know, for me, I learned to swing that hammer. In fact, I ended up doing interior trim carpentry. So I did the fancy custom work. You know, we did, you know, four piece crown molding and put up uh, fireplaces and mantles, all the fancy stuff, right? Which I really loved being able to do that. But by the, you know, when I first started out, I could barely swing a hammer, but by the end of it, you know, I could make that compound miter saw sing, right? I mean, I knew how to work that thing. And, and put something forth that was much greater than just the tool itself, because the talent, the, the, the skill set, the drive, the desire that the person has behind the tool is really what creates the output, right? Chat GPT is no different, right? We have the same paint as Van Gogh, right? We, we, have, we have access to the same tools, but I'm not, I'm not going to create something that beautiful. I'm not going to create something that valuable, that historic, that meaningful, we all have the same basketball as LeBron James, right? But there's no, you know, I mean, he's a freak of nature, right? <laughs> one of the best, I mean, arguably one of the best, arguably the best, right? A lot of people have schools of thought about this, but, you know, there's no way that we, that I could do anything near what he does because of his skill set, his training, the way he's built, his heart, uh, you know, the people that supported him, all that goes into what he's able to do. Gordon Ramsay, right? We all have the same ingredients, but we're not making, uh, at least I'm not making anything half as delicious as he does. Mm. So there is something that's happening that a lot of people are unaware of right now, and that is called a prompt engineering. Okay. So, you know, you heard the adage, you ask a stupid question, you get a stupid answer, right? Uh, we talked about this with Carrie before that this is so true in our relationships. It's true in our business. It's true when we are growing our, our teams, you know, asking quality questions is what produces quality answers. And that's what drives things forward. Garbage in, garbage out, right? I love this. It's, it's kind of a funny picture, but it really gives you a visual of what this is like. I mean, this <laughs> dump truck is dumping bad prompts into this guy's brain. He's punching it into chat, chat GPT and what he's getting out of it are bad answers, bad results, bad output. All right, I'm gonna show you guys really quick this, this uh, video. And what I'm gonna do next, I've got a little um, gift, a little present for you at the end of this uh, that will help save you a lot of time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you really quick what it looks like to put a bad prompt in chat GPT and then a good one. And then I'm going to read through what both of those actually look like so you can tell the difference. Okay, that sounds great. <laughs> this reminds me of yesterday I went on and I said um give me 30 days of Facebook posts for my real estate business and literally it gave me day one day two day three day four and then I asked it to expand and so it gave me the hashtags it gave me the emojis it gave me everything it was incredible 100 100 percent and a lot of this is is chat GPT four because it is, it is highly advanced. Yeah. But we all, but this, there are literally think tanks. I mean, there are geek squads, right? Brainiacs, uh, Discord is one of the, the websites, but people are digging deep, you guys, into this prompt engineering vibe. Mm -hmm. Because again, you know, you can have a hammer. But can you build the house, right? You have to know how to use the tools. The tool in and of itself is not going to make you rich. It's not going to make you a better realtor. <laughs> it may make you a little bit more prolific, but if it makes you prolific with bad content, who cares, right? I mean, you got you to gotta use this in a way where you can really squeeze the juice out of it and maximize the output and expenditures. 
Um, and that, and really, if you look at, at anything that has developed over time, we, our creative nature finds things in the creation that we never could have thought of, you know, because people are so complex and God has given us so much uh, creativity and, and the ability to yeah. really play things out. So this is certainly no different, even though it's, it's created from us and, and it's, uh, you know, an extension of us in a way, it's no different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and we're almost, we're almost through with this, but I'm going to take you through really quick these two, just so you can get a real life example of what this is like. And then I'm going to give you a little present at the end. That's going to uh, help you guys with being able to do this much more easily. So here's a, here's a, idea, uh, an example of a bad prompt, right? Write a story in 150 words about a buyer's journey to buying a house. Now, you know, that's probably something that I would say. It's something that a lot of us would probably say. That sounds pretty normal. But here's what came out. This, and this is, I really did this. I really put this into chat GPT and th these things really came out. Uh, Samantha had always dreamt of owning her own house. And after years of saving, she was finally ready to embark on the journey to become a homeowner. She spent countless hours browsing online listings, touring open houses, and attending meetings with real estate agents. Initially, Samantha struggled to find a house. With, ah, you know, ah. It's like, okay, I mean, this is fine, right? I mean, it's fine. But, and you can see how this can be applicable in your business. So I'm just using this as an example, but obviously there's a myriad of ways you can apply this uh, to social media and blogging and, you know, marketing and, and uh, creation and all that. But this is fine, but it's just kind of blah, right? It's just not, it's sort of uh, lifeless. So here is a good prompt for chat GPT. Write an allegorical story in the first person point of view that highlights the emotional pain of not having a good realtor to help you buy a house and of having the right realtor help them overcome their problem. Write it in the tone and style of Dave Barry in 150 words. So I used the same 150 words. I used the same basic concept, but I said, write an allegorical story, right? An allegorical story takes you through a journey. It makes you feel something. There's, you know, beginning a, 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 a there's a, um, uh, you know, a, a, a peak, a valley, uh, there's a real rhythm to it. You know, people are taken through this emotional journey with the protagonist, right? Um, and there's, uh, there's always something that somebody can relate to in a story like this. And I said, do it in the first person, highlight the emotional pain, all the things that you, know, you kind of want to come, mm -hmm. uh, you want to come across in a story like this. And Dave Barry is just, I mean, you could do Warner Herzog. I mean, you could do whoever, uh, whatever style you want, you know, this guy's a sort of a, like a comedy writer for magazines. Uh, I, I think it's New York times or something that he writes for, but, um, he just has kind of a comedic, uh, jazzy style. That's really cool. A lot of people like, so <laughs> this one, once upon a time in the land of real estate, I was a parched wanderer in a desert of despair. My heart ached with the pain of a thousand questionable property listings, all because I was without a good realtor to guide me. Then one day my savior appeared, right? The Yoda, realtor extraordinaire, the great Gary, armed with the compass of closing deals and the map of market analysis, Gary was the ultimate home buying Sherpa. We ventured into the treacherous terrain of bidding wards and the forest of frustration. Together we faced the beasts of bureaucracy, tamed the wild inspections and laughed in the face of financing fears. Gary's mighty negotiation sword sliced through the darkness of doubt, leading me to my dream home oasis. As I stood on the doorstep of my new castle, I knew I had vanquished the emotional pain of home ownership. I owed it all to Gary, the realtor who held the key to my heart and my oh new abode. Oh my goodness. Right? Wow. I mean, this, this brings up like. It's happening. <laughs> hey, if you want to write a book just give chat GPT a prompt, right? I bet there's, this just brings so many questions up, right? Like some good, yeah. some not so good. Right. <laughs> like oh yeah. Making sure, give your kid chat B GPT for their next paper. If you want to get it done quickly at the last minute, right? <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. Don't, don't be afraid of AI. Don't be afraid of, you know, again, it's, it's only as good as the humans behind it. It's a tool and nothing else. Right. I'm not afraid of AI. I'm not afraid it's going to take over the world or whatever. I'm afraid of the people behind it. I'm afraid right. of the humans, right? The humans, they, they scare me because they're the ones that take tools. Any tool is a weapon. If you hold it right, Ani DeFranco said that, right? Love so, that. or somebody. So, 
Um, so, but this, this obviously opens up doors The the prompt engineering opens up doors to building your business and really learning how to use this tool to create a masterpiece. So this is my uh, special gift. Okay. Prompt-genie.com. Write this down because this is a website that will allow you to type in the bad prompt and it will automatically generate the good prompt. I love it. And thank you for listening and hanging in today. Uh, here's some links. Check me out, linkupwithme.com and marcustube.com. Go uh, check out my YouTube channel and like and subscribe. <laughs> okay, so Marcus, you said that was prompt dash genie. Yeah, let me go back. There we go. Prompt, there it is, everybody. Prompt dash genie.com. Okay, so give us your questions. Are you ready for questions, Marcus? I'm ready. All right. All right. So can we stop share of your, um, there we go. So we can see you loud and proud right there. This is awesome. And I love how you took it down to something just really, really simple. So who has some questions for Marcus as it pertains to chat GPT or, you know, any I would say if you have any, is it okay if they ask other questions pertaining? Oh to yeah, hundred percent for you sure. Know the answer you'll, I'm sure you'll say it. So who has some questions for Marcus or um, a comment that we can engage in conversation around while we have him because he knows way more about this than I know I do, and I mean I know like a minuscule amount. I just learned a whole bunch. So of do I. So do I. <laughs> All right, who will go? Candace, are you ready? Yeah, I want to see a little bit more about like the the um, graphics, like with the video and um, pictures. Sorry, pictures. For you mean like the chat, the uh, Dolly two and that thing, the text, the text to art generator. Yeah, like uh, where you can create. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it's Dolly two. Let me go back to the let me go back to the the thing again, and I'll show you this. Let you guys see this again. So um, that's pro I don't wonder if you have to get, so some of these you actually have to buy a subscription to, cause I know. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. I mean, I, I didn't, this isn't, you know, uh, this isn't sort of a, a free, a freebie deal. A lot of these you are going to have to pay for, but it's, it's just cost of doing business. Um, you know, but, and it, most of it like chat GPT, I think it's 20 bucks a month. Yeah. I mean, it it's is. not, this stuff is not expensive. Some, some stuff can get expensive. I, I've been using Jasper for a year and a half and Jasper is pretty expensive, but, and I, I'm yeah. still using it. Uh, but I use chat GPT and Jasper. So Candace, um, da this one here, Dali two, and then mid journey. And listen, there are probably, you know, 17 of these right now. Like if you, if you go to Google and type in, uh, you know, text to art AI generator or, te or text to picture AI generator, something like that. It, I swear like a million will pop up, but these are two that I know work at high levels. Some of them are maybe not so great. Other ones are in between. Other ones are being developed. One of the things too, that my broker reminded me is that when you're using these, you know, prompts and things to remember to remove any words that would be, um, you know, things like family or things that might, um, might not be fair housing. Um, so just yeah. to keep that in mind, that was a good reminder to me. Very good. So oh, yeah, Mark, tell us a little bit more. I'm interested if, I don't know if anyone else is, but, um, Lisa said, I'm learning and using more AI options in Canva to create design graphics. I, I love that. That's definitely a, an awesome way to go. So tell us a little bit more. So this Dolly, the text to graphics, how can we, what's an example of a way that we can use that in our business? How for the lay person that's just not sure, how, how would that work? Yeah, I'll give you a quick example that, that worked for me. So I wanted to post a video on YouTube 
uh, and I wanted the caption to read, you know, robots are taking over. And so it's a YouTube video to grab people's attention uh, mm -hmm. to get them to watch one of these types of videos where I'm talking about generative AI. And I wanted um, a picture of myself being choked by a robot, <laughs> right? I thought that'd be funny if I put myself being choked by a robot. And so I typed in, you know, you know, Marcus Dilley choked by a robot. And it, 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 it created something that didn't really look like me. So I just cut my face out and put it over the, the face of the person being choked. So, so I posted it and my, my um, thumbnail is actually a robot choking me. Oh my God. So that's just one. I mean, there's a million different ways you can do it depending on what, what you're looking to do, but that's just one example. Is that video posted on your YouTube channel? It is. Yeah. So you it's guys actually can check out Marcus Dilly's <laughs> YouTube channel. It's actually the 10 pound sh sugar in a five pound bag one video that I did last time that I recorded that I just po just posted. So it's actually the one that we just did before. That is amazing. <laughs> I love it. So you guys, there's a lot of creative ways you could use that. You could um, probably use that putting like listing stuff together. I mean, any kind of, you could use that for marketing materials, right? Like just really kind of bringing in the house, you know, that you've got, that you've got for sale or something like that and putting together and just play with it. It's not that expensive. I just pulled it up. This Dolly one is not expensive at all. No, it's not. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's most like of them are, they want people to test them. So mm -hmm. mo they're making them very uh, low entry. Most of I them. Love that. I love that. Okay, who else has a question for Marcus or has wants to ask to get more information on or something that you might be interested for your real estate business? While you're doing that, I'll tell you one thing I did do is I played around with coming up with a script to re, to have conversations for recruiting agents. Mm. And that was pretty cool for building the downline. Sure, so sure, sure. I, I spent like 10 minutes on it this morning, even though I have a lot of scripts. I just kind of went from some of my scripts and gave it scenarios. And at first it gave me a lot of like letters that I might be writing, you know, cause it was sincerely from blah, blah, blah. But then it migrated to actually giving me an actual call script, which was super cool. I really, really enjoyed that. that. Cool? I loved it. That was really cool. Okay. So, yeah. um, yeah, oh, I see a lot lines, of, uh, Joseph, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, th this stuff's amazing. And I think we're just at the, like the tip of the iceberg now in terms of like all the applications. And uh, that that goes to kind of what you were saying, Marcus, that um, it's, it's limited by our creativity, but the more creative people get with dip, using it for different applications, it's gonna make it just compounding more and more valuable. Um, I was uh, teaching a, a couple of my agents uh, about using KV Core the other day. And so we created a landing page and I showed them, you know, you can share it to a, a Facebook group for, for housing. And I was like, you know, I kind of had a, a brain fart for a moment on like writing ad copy. And I was yeah. like, wait a second, I can use chat GPT and ask them, you know, uh, to, to write me a compelling ad that's going to get people to click on it to go to my landing page to drive traffic to my KV Core website and generate leads for me. It's, it's mind blowing. hundred percent, Joe. I mean, you can do, you can say, you know, write, write me five clickbait titles for a YouTube mm -hmm. video and write me a, a description about blah, blah, blah. Or if you want to do a, a blog or something, uh, some sort of copy, you know, you can say, write it in the style of the New Yorker or, you know, it's, it's amazing too. The thing about it is it, it, it isn't quite, it isn't quite developed enough yet to go really long. So you have to, you know, if you're going to really do something that has a lot of longevity, as far as a piece, you kind of have to fill it in so that it can take you to the next level. But, you know, I, I, I so, so well said, I feel like it's kind of like the internet. I mean, you know, does any, I mean, um, uh, what's the, uh, what was the, uh, the file sharing service? that was back in the day that um napster napster does napster. anybody remember yeah. napster i do yeah, that was right so thank you thank you joe so like i i feel like this is kind of like the internet in its early stages it's like any any massive tool that nobody has any idea what it's capable of 
uh, like the internet. I mean, you think about Napster and that was revolutionary, which is what we're experiencing now. But, you know, now we've got people, you know, putting themselves on TikTok and becoming artists, number one charts with no publishing and doing all their own merchandise and not having to, you know, sell their soul to a record company. And it's amazing. Absolutely. It's yeah, it's next level for sure. So one of the things that um, I asked it, so again, I'm just, I'm simply using it, right? Like, I don't know how many, I'm not like this grand thinker, you know, I mean, I like to think that I am, but you know, when it comes to this kind of stuff, I'm just <laughs> the easy stuff, right? So I'm like, okay, um, create for me a um, social media, a weekly social media schedule. And it just created it with all of the things I need to talk about. That's right. Right. I mean, it's just like this. You could Sunday, you could literally sit down at chat beat GPT. All right. So let's get very um, singular on this, whether you have a team or whether you're an individual agent, you could sit down on a Sunday night and you could plan out your week for all of your social media. You could copy it, paste it, schedule it and be done. Now, how many of us pay people to do that for us, right? Or how many of us don't have really our own voice? So now you can massage this, if I can say that, to actually kind of have your own voice and make some changes to it. And you can get all of that done in an hour to an hour and a half. It's revolutionary for your business in terms of your reach and reaching people through social media, right? I just think that this is a game changer. If you really just take a second and lean into the opportunity of it, it can be a game changer for your lead generation business in terms Insane. of real estate business. Yeah, I love it. I'm gonna Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to share the screen here real quick one more time. And I let me know if you guys can see this. So I want I want to show you what I did here. This is me playing around. With, can you guys see the the screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm playing around here with Chat GPT, and I this is just for a YouTube uh, short uh, or a YouTube video content, right? So that I know what what to put. You're tasked with creating a witty and sharp YouTube short script to outline the top three things sellers need to know in this market. Your script should succinctly explain the important points that sellers need to understand. In order to be successful, use clever writing techniques to make the script engaging while keeping it educational. Be sure to include relevant examples, blah, 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 make it under 60 seconds. Okay. So here's what it put together. Like, oh this gosh. isn't like, this is literally what you would get from a script writer. This is and not, not only is it what you would get from a script writer, it's in the same format. It gives oh, you the title, the goodness. intro. It gives you where the effects uh, are supposed to be, what, what it's, the effects are supposed to sound like, how you're supposed to give a playful wink, where the drum roll is. I mean, the whole thing all the way down. And then I, I wrote right five clickbait hooks. And then, like I said, Joseph earlier, and then here they are right mm -hmm. here. So this is literally my entire YouTube script in this was probably took 15 seconds. I love it. And so here's another cool thing. Um, I love it that you said that about the clickbait. I actually took a note on that real quick. Um, we had Candace. So Candace, tell us about this spreadsheet that you just dropped into the chat box for us, if you don't mind. Yeah, so that one has over 600 different AI tools. And then in it, it also has it by category. So if you're looking for real estate, storytelling, um, video, text to speech, um, video generator. So that was something shared with me. Um, and the other thing I had done recently with a brand new agent was um, ask chat GPT to help it create a realtor's weekly schedule, including schedule blocks. So that was another use. Nice. Nice. Oh my gosh. So you can Uses even use are unlimited coach agents. It's unbelievable. So really, I love that. Candace is like, yeah, I, I take leverage wherever I can get it. And this is one of them. So I have a question for you, Marcus. What do you see as we near the end of this call here? We just have a few minutes left. And guys, if you've got, again, any more, any more questions, you can put them in the chat box. I'm sitting here scrolling and looking. So Marcus, what do you see as the next big thing that's coming? That's a great question. <laughs> the next big thing. I think that 
I think the next big, big thing is here. I think that what you'll see coming is going to be people utilizing this tool in new creative ways that we haven't thought of. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, there are, again, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm all in. I'm geeking out on this stuff. I, did, I don't want it to get in the wrong hands, right? <laughs> but, you know, we are, I mean, you know, it, uh, robots are not going to be able to kill anyone in our lifetime anyway, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, it's just not possible. We're so far away from anything like that. So, you know, it, what's coming, I think, is good. What's coming, I think, for the most part is going to be useful. There are negatives, obviously, and, you know, there's that people think it's the dumbing down of society because nobody's going to be able to write anymore. You know, again, this, it, this does not, this can't do the work for you. What this has to be is it helping you outline it and, and fill in the blanks in a way that gives you that structure so that you're not spending, you know, 80% of the time putting together the structure. This can yeah. write it for you, but you really shouldn't, you shouldn't let GPT do it for you. You should let GPT do it with you. Yes. Yeah, I agree 100%. And the other part about this to you guys is that, you know, even when I go through in all seriousness, and I go through and I look at all this stuff, there's still some words I have to change. There's still some things you have to read through it, you really need to make sure that you are responsible for the information that you're putting out. I think for me, what I have seen with this is that it has taken two or three hours of work and it has compressed it down for me, I was telling Carrie into 30 minutes this morning, and then all I think we lost her. We did lose her. I thought it was me because I've had problems with my internet. So I was like, oh, well, there we go. It was actually (laughs) me this time. It is so true. I mean, you do have to take the time. You are going to take the time to do this stuff anyway. It's just going to shorten that and then take the time to look it over and make sure it's you and it makes sense and it's it's the way it should be and it's not going to get you in trouble. I really like, I like what Candace said, sorry, uh, about the family thing. She's so right. You have to be careful. And the other thing too, is the data set only goes to like 2021. So it doesn't know anything for the last two years, uh, practically. So, you know, uh, we have to be careful to make sure that we're checking it for mistakes. That's why we don't want to just, you know, blindly post because here's the thing. It sounds like it knows what it's talking about. It does not know what it's talking about. It is a machine. It has no idea what it's saying. It's just supposed to sound like it does. So we have to make sure to proofread it. I keep being muted. I love it. And I'm so excited that um, we're going to have you on a little bit more frequently because if we can chunk it down into these little pieces like you are, then we can actually go do something with it, come back, share what we've done with it, how it's helped us help each other, and then we'll move to the next. So we'll get you on the schedule for May. Everybody watch out for that. Um, and if you are, um, with Becky and I in our revenue share group, don't forget about our group coaching call tomorrow, Thursday. Otherwise we'll be back on Monday. You guys, Veronica Figueroa, who is one of the top 50 of all revenue share earners with an EXP realty is joining us as a guest. And Becky is going to interview her and have a great conversation on Monday. Cause I'll be traveling, but she is going to have a phenomenal uh, conversation around revenue share. I am certain. So make sure you join Monday for the revenue share call. Invite your, uh, you know, your friends and your colleagues, and let's uh, show up for uh, Veronica since she's spending time with us, and it's going to be a great call. So thanks as always, Marcus, and thanks everybody watching live, and to all of you that joined here on Zoom. We will see you real soon. Bye Thank guys. You so much. Bye everyone. Take care. It was awesome. Thank you. <laughs>